So the plan from yesterday really was to use our ticker timer, tape, but prior to this you guys hopefully will remember that we used a ticker timer and we actually used it to measure time. All right? It happens to measure two things for us though. The ticker timer will also measure distance because what we have is a piece of ticker timer tape, all right, which allows us to measure distance and the dots allow us to measure time. Yesterday when we spoke about this and I asked individuals, how do we measure time? And you told me we can use a stopwatch, we can use our timers on our phones, okay, if I ask you to, you can use iPad timers. There's a whole myriad of ways we can measure time. Now, the way that a ticker timer does it, if you remember from yesterday, is, who can put up their hand and tell me, how does, how, does the, how does the ticker timer actually measure time for us? Hands up if you can explain it, you've got an idea. Nimrat? Use tape. Uses tape, but what on the tape actually measures time? Surinda? The dots. The dots, yeah. It's actually the time between the dots is, well, Okay, is how we measure the time. Between one dot and another dot. Now we said yesterday also that the time, because we were using a 240 volt power supply, okay, and I told you that it operates at a cycle. It's a cyclic power supply, 50 hertz. So I'm just basically re reiterating what we did yesterday. And that means every time that it makes a dot, the time for the ticket timer to go up and down and up and down, all right, 50 times per second. So the interval, every single time, is always going to be 0.02 of a second. That's something that I need you to understand, and that will only happen, okay, if you are paying close attention to what's happening at the board. All right, so I've got three pictures on the board. And this is where people get confused, okay? And it happens every year when I teach the same con concept. So it's for the benefit of everyone. So you can watch it right now. All right. If this happened to be your ticket timer tape, and I'm only gonna get a portion of it, okay? And if I ask you, what's the time from these two dots here, can anybody put up their hand and tell me what time interval that is showing me between those two dots? Connor? Sorry, right? No. Just remember, all right, the time interval. William? 0 0.02. 0 0.02 seconds. So the time here is 0 0.02 seconds between those two dots. We'll talk about what that tells me about the motion, okay, in each one of these examples. The next one, okay, now I'm going to look at just these two dots here, okay. What's the time between the two dots, Luca? No. Keep going. The time between any two dots is? 0 0.02, right? So the time here, from there, to there is also 0 0.02 of a second. Nothing's changed in terms of the speed that the ticker timer goes up and down. Okay? So that's always the same. So between any two dots, the time interval is the same. And we're going to utilise that in a minute to work out for your tape what's the total time. Okay? These two dots here. What's the time interval for those two dots, Ali? Good. 0 0.02 of a second. Excellent. So whether I've got two dots or 20 dots on my ticker timer, all I need to know is what's the time between any two dots? Okay. Let's move forward with the tape in front of you. Okay. And this is the first thing that I want you to do. I'll, re I'll use my tape as an example, okay, and then on Friday, or even towards the end of this lesson, I'll drag the ticker timers out again. And if you haven't got a tape, 
You can do one fairly quickly. It's not a big task as we found out yesterday. All right, laptop should be closed. And you need to watch this one, all right? So with your take, all right, in front of you, the thing that I asked you to do yesterday was to mark on your take where it started. So I've actually done that in mind. Of course, you won't see it from where you're sitting. And also mark where it actually finished. Okay, so we've got a beginning and an end for that entire motion that we tried to do yesterday. Now, although this one we tried to do, I had it written on mine, uh, was constant velocity. All right, it's not that constant because at the beginning, I've got the dots close together and then they continue something like that. Okay? Oh, by the way, just run back one step. Of these two, of A and B, can anyone tell me which of those objects that would be attached to those ticker timers is going the fastest and how you work that out? Marco. Excellent. So B is going the fastest because in that amount of time, that's how far the object has moved. This is where we get, get the distance. And in this amount of time, the object has moved probably 10 times as much. So this is how we use the tape to measure distance as well. Okay? And your the tension, I must say, is excellent, boys. All right, over here. So with your tape in front of you, all right, I'll do it from my example up here. We want to count the number of gaps because I want to work out the total time. So what I want you to work out is the number of dots, okay, on your tape. And if I do mine, I'll count them quickly. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21. Count yours at the same time. 42, 43, 44, 45, 50, 54. Okay, so I've got 54 dots, okay, from the very first dot on my tape, okay, up to the last dot on my tape. You should be able to count the total dots on your tape from the start to the finish as well. Now here's where it gets a bit complicated. All right? So once you've got your number of dots counted, I just need your attention back again, and do what I've done, write the number, actually, and I should do that, I should write the number, how many there is, um, on my tape, so I know how many there is, okay? Now, I didn't actually count the first dot, okay? I actually started from the first dot in, I didn't actually start from the beginning, all right? but the last dot was number 54. So, how do I work out the time to go from here to here? How do I work out the total time now, knowing this information, what do I do, Ali? Exactly right. All right, so Ali just said, the total time is going to be equal to 0 0.02 times by 54, and that will be my total time. Okay, my total time for the actual, for my motion. Now, what I've got to do though, okay, is I'll just grab my calculator, and you can grab your calculator as well. You can work out your time 0.02 times 54. Equals. All right. Yeah, to work out a calculator, no problem. So mine is 1.08 seconds. There it is. Okay. Sorry. Right. Just do it for the one is constant motion. Okay. The one that we call constant. So this one here. We were trying to do a constant velocity. Not quite finished yet, so keep paying attention. So I've worked out my total time. Second. The second thing. 
is this. To work out the velocity, I have to work out the distance. That was my formula from yesterday. So to work out the total velocity, or I should be using the word average velocity, okay, I've got to work out also the distance. Anyone got any idea how I work out the distance? Hands up, how do I do it? I measure it, okay. So I've got to measure from the beginning. This is why I had to lay to the start and the finish, okay. So I have to measure um, from the beginning to the end and I've got exactly 74 centimetres. 74 centimetres is what I've got. Now, 74 centimetres. Can anyone remember from yesterday's lesson what are the units for distance in these calculations? Pet, pisadap. Okay, William? Metres, thank you. Better put up your hand. All right? So the units are metres. So I've got to transfer that to metres, which is 0.74 metres. Now, I can now work out the velocity. All I need to do is to put the distance into my formula, which is 0.74. I know the time from the number of dots, okay? And I go back to my calculator, all right, to work out my actual speed. Let me just do the calculation for a second. I'll go back over it again. So I've got uh, 0.74 divided by uh, 1.08 equals, and I've got 0 0.68, 0 0.68 metres per second, or I could put down metres per second to the minus one. Okay, I've got a few ways okay, of dealing with that measurement of distance over time. Now, how do I measure the distance? I need to physically measure the start, where it is from the start to the end. How do I measure time? I count the number of dots. I don't count the first one, I start from the second dot, and I multiply it by 0.02, because this is between the time, between each dot is 0.02 per second, which is what you told me, Ali. Well done.